In this video, I'm going to show you how you can cut into a 3D object and retain perfect normals so that you don't get any shading or reflection artifacts. So let's start from scratch. Shift A, I'm going to use a sphere because spheres are notoriously difficult to get good shading on after you've done a Boolean or a cut operation. Control 1 and that will give us more subdivisions. Control A will apply that, right click, and then I choose to shade smooth. What I want to do now is duplicate this and then hide the duplicate and rename it. I'll rename it to original. We're going to add a new object. So we don't have to add a plane. You can draw anything you want, but I'm going to go with a plane just for simplicity. And before I do that, I think I was in edit mode, so let's undo that. I wasn't in edit mode. Oh, it's the reflection. So R, X, 90, G, Y, move it out a little bit. I'm going to scale it down, control A and apply the scale. And then I want to go into front view and orthographic view. And with the plane still selected, I'm going to shift click on the sphere, go into edit mode and press F3 and then choose knife project that will cut that shape into the sphere okay and just to reiterate you don't have to use a, a plane if I wanted to I could have maybe gone with let's say a shift a and go with a curve maybe a circle and RX 90 scale that down Oop, oh. X90, there we are. Scale that down. Maybe move it out a little bit. So that's in front. Where's it gone? So GY, move it out. We can get rid of that by the way now. Delete that. Okay, so back into orthographic. I'm going to apply the scale. Control A. And then with it still selected, shift click on this into edit mode and then F3 and then knife project. All right. And that's done the same thing basically. So I can now delete that, go into edit mode on this and we can do something with that. I'm actually going to go with what we've got in here. So let's undo that. Undo that cut. Well, so I'm going to go with just this one. I just wanted to show you that you could do it with a curve if you wanted to. So I'll just come out of edit mode and I'll delete that. Back into edit mode. And I want to select everything that's inside of there. So if I select that and then do select. Select loops, select inner region. I'm going to delete that. So delete the faces. That's left us with this border. So I'll select everything and then do select loops boundary loop. So we've got that, that boundary selected. I'll just come out of edit mode briefly. What I want to do is add a shrink wrap modifier. And I'm going to choose the target to be the original so that any vertices that I move on this object now will be snapped back onto the original shape. So basically we'll be able to do whatever we want with the topology and it will still remain a sphere. Okay, so back into edit mode, and to see this work properly, we need to click on this little button on cage, and then it will show us in edit mode exactly what's happening. And if I scale this, you'll notice that it's retaining the shape of that sphere. If I turn this off, then you see we're getting that result. Okay, so you can either scale inwards. Or you can scale outwards. But if you're going to scale outwards so that you don't overlap the surrounding geometry, what you need to do is just turn on proportional editing. And then you can, using the mouse wheel, change the four. And then you can move it either in or out. And it won't, you won't get any overlapping geometry. All right. So I'm probably going to bring mine out a little bit. It won't be a perfect square anymore. 
I think in actual fact, I'm going to take it in. Oh, there. If you did want to take it out, and you do get this weird sort of um, distortion, what you can try is to change this to project, and then neg tick negative as well. And that might give you a slightly better result. If it's not looking good, you can try some of the others. So I think target normal project is definitely a much better result. So if you're going to expand it, I would go with target normal project. Okay. So what I'll do now is before I get rid of the shrink wrap modifier, in order to get a bevel, I need the, the geometry that's surrounding the border to be quads. I can't bevel this because we've got end guns all the way around it. And to do this, very simply, all we'll do is press E and then S to scale that in. And as wide as you want your bevel to be. So that's plenty big enough. And now I can come out of edit mode, apply the shrink wrap, back into edit mode, and I'll extrude this in on the Y axis. And I'll probably just flatten that as well, so scale it. I'll just turn off proportional editing. So scale it S, Y to limit it to scaling on the Y, and then press zero, and that's flatten that out. And now what we can do is fill that and select this boundary or this, or this edge loop, control B, we can add a bevel. Maybe somewhere about there. And I'll probably give it a bit of a bevel on the corner as well. The only problem is some of these are a bit too close together. So I'm going to get rid of that one and that one. Not that one in fact. So this one. Hmm. So we've got a couple of options here. I don't want the these two to be sort of affect this close to the edge, otherwise can't bevel very far. So I'm, all I'm going to do very simply is press number one, select this one and this one, and press J. That will join those, and then press two, and then Control X. We'll get rid of that one. And now I'll do the same with this one. So that and that one. Press J. And then number two, get this one, control X. And now, hopefully, if we alt click this one, we don't need that one either. So control X. This one and this one, control X, and now we've got more room to play with and we still retain the original shape that we've cut in. So I'll just do the same over here with these ones. Basically, we're wanting to break this edge loop because if I click there, you can see it's going all the way to the center of the object. So basically, I need to get rid of this edge. So press two, that one and that one, control X, and then one, that one, that one, and J. And this one, and this one, and J to join. And I can get rid of that one. And with that done, we can select this one, this one, this one, and this one. We can now bevel those and we've got a bit more leeway. 
to bevel them. And finally, I want to do the inside, we can do that. And if we come out and have a look, we finished the modeling, but you can see we've got all this horrible distortion. And if we just change the matte cap to be maybe something more reflective, like this, you can see the reflections are also really badly distorted. And it's going out quite a way. So even this part here. And to fix it, basically all we're going to do is transfer the normals from the original one onto the new one using the data transfer modifier. So let's choose the source, which is going to be the original. The normal data is in the face corner data, so check that. We need to click on custom normals. And for it to work, we have to choose auto, we have to enable auto smooth in the data panel. So click on that, choose auto smooth. And we're getting a weird result for two reasons. Firstly, it's smoothing everything. So even the hole is trying to give the same normals as the sphere, which obviously is incorrect. And also the method it's using to transfer the normals is not suitable. So we need to change the mapping to either nearest face interpolated or projected face interpolated. Either of these is normally fine. And there you can see straight away, that's fixed the first problem. The second problem is the inside. So what we need to do is tell this modifier only to work on certain vertices. And we're gonna need to use a vertex group to do that. So into edit mode, press number three, click the back face, control plus, to extend the selection to somewhere around about there probably. You could probably take it a bit further. It's, it's trial and error, but we'll try it all the way out. Don't, don't go all the way to here though, because you do need to, I'll just show what happens if we do that. So I'm going to assign a group and I'm going to call this, in fact, let's just invert it first. Control I, and I'm going to choose to assign, and I'll call this sphere. And I'll come back out into the modifier and I'm going to say the vertex group I want to limit it to is the sphere. And now you can see we're getting perfect normals all the way up until that bevel. So if you want to go a little bit further, which I think you can get away with, just press Control plus, maybe take it into about there, maybe one more. And I'm going to go into the data panel and just add these to that sphere vertex group. And now if I come out, you can see we're getting the perfect result. And just to show the difference between these two, if I turn this on and off, you can see we've got rid of all that distortion. I'll just turn that off and on. And if you've got some sort of bad shading on the inside, what you could do is just go into your data panel and increase the auto smooth. You can see if we zoom in at this part here, we have got a bit of a shading artifact there on the bevel. And that's just because we haven't got a high enough value for the auto smooth. Turn that up a little bit and that's a bit more. That's completely tidied that up as well. If you do still get problems on the inside, what you could do as one last step is add a weighted normal modifier. Choose to use it on only the inside part. So you can click this little invert button next to the vertex group. And then it will apply that weighted normal just to the inside part um, and not the outer sphere. And if you want to export your 3D model to a game engine or a different 3D software, what you can do is you can either apply the modifiers uh, from the bottom to the top. So control A, control A, and just undo that. And the data will be kept inside the split normal data in the geometry, which will be exported. So for example, if I go into file, export, and then choose FBX, you'll notice on the right hand side, 
we've got a few options. And under geometry, we've got an option to apply the modifiers. So that will basically save you from applying modifiers if you want to keep them in your scene. They'll only be applied on the exported object. And the smoothing will come from the normals that are embedded. And that's it. So I hope the video was useful. I'd really appreciate it if you'd like the video and subscribe to the channel to help me out. And I'll see you next time.